It was a quiet, peaceful place, far from the hustle-bustle of politics, city life, and the roaring thunder of battlefields, where a man came to terms with his historic legacy. Comforted by his family and the sounds of the natural world, he would keep his mind clear and focused in a battle against time. On July 23, 1885, at the age of 63, Ulysses S. Grant died at an Adirondack cottage on the slopes of Mount McGregor in Wilton, New York, his loving family at his side. Probably there's no single individual who had a greater impact on the military history of the United States than Ulysses S. Grant. As Lincoln's commanding general in the Civil War, Grant had defeated Southern secession and slavery. As United States President during Reconstruction, Grant guided the Southern states back into the Union. Perhaps no other American leader has done more to secure and preserve the United States since the American Revolution. This is where the man who saved the Union fought his last battle. When the nation learned that Grant was dying, there was public concern for the former president. Financially damaged by unscrupulous investors, it was Grant's friend, Mark Twain, who helped him with a book offer that would provide enough royalties to support his family after his passing. Well, I think a man like like Grant, a figure like Grant, is somewhat mythological. He's a larger-than-life figure, arguably one of the greatest celebrities of the 19th century, um, and probably one of the most misunderstood. And what's nice about Grant Cottage is this location and what happened here is that it takes away some of that cloud of mythology and you start to see the human side, who Grant really was, and his personal side, and a lot about his character. Despite his debilitating illness, Grant worked with determination to complete his memoirs at the cottage, finishing only three days before he died. It is this last battle of Grant's life, the evidence of a completion of his last unselfish and courageous act that has been preserved as a time capsule for over 130 years at Grant Cottage. On the quiet, secluded mountaintop with an inspiring view, Grant spent the last six weeks of his life finishing a memoir reflective of his strength of character, assuming no greater position than his fellow citizens. Visitors are very struck by how well preserved it is. You know, it's a time capsule, and it's been kept as a museum since the 1880s, shortly after Grant passed. It's been kept very original, and that strikes people so they get a real feeling of being stepping back in time, but also the story is very compelling on a very personal level. Of course, he had done his duty to his country throughout his life, but here at the end of his life, he was no longer a general, he was no longer a president. He was just a man trying to take care of his family, and I think that's something that I hope everyone that comes here can relate to, and it's something that really affected me deeply, uh, being a staff member here, uh, and learning more about who Grant was. Thousands of Civil War veterans made the pilgrimage to Grant's Cottage just outside of Saratoga Springs. Thousands more visit Mount McGregor annually to see the original artifacts preserved in reverence exactly as it was on the day Grant died. July 23rd, 1885. A famous forefather's flame went out, but the man is not forgotten. The story lives on in a sacred place called Grant Cottage.